Hi! This lesson covers the FAA Part 121 regulation regarding alternate weather minimums. Helpful references are the Federal Aviation Regulations, Terminal Procedures Publications, and your Air Carrier's Operation Specifications, also known as OPSPECs. When an alternate airport is required, the airport selected must meet certain minimum weather conditions at the time of arrival at that airport. The alternate ETA for this purpose is based on the planned destination ETA plus the time en route to the alternate. Both weather reports and forecasts must be considered, including conditional statements in the forecast, such as tempo, probability, and becoming statements. Part 91 addresses alternate weather minimums in 91-169. The standard minimum visibility at the alternate ETA is 2 statute miles. The minimum ceiling is 600 feet if there is a functional precision instrument approach to a suitable runway or 800 feet if an instrument approach to a suitable runway is only served by a non-precision instrument approach. It's possible that an airport under consideration as an alternate requires non-standard weather minimums. Always consult the non-standard alternate minimums section of the appropriate terminal procedures publication. Here we see that there are non-standard alternate minimums published for the Indianapolis International Airport. Determine which runways are suitable. Consider the wind direction for the estimated time at which the aircraft would arrive following a diversion after reaching the planned destination. Also consider the availability of the runway length needed to comply with the aircraft performance requirements. Check the notums for possible instrument approach outages and runway closures or length restrictions. Non-standard alternate minimums are indicated by the superscript numbers following the approach designations. All of the listed approaches which are followed by the superscript number 1 require non-standard weather minimums for aircraft in which are in approach speed categories A, B, and C. Instead of the standard Part 91 minimum weather conditions of 602, they are 702. Alternate weather minimums for a Category D aircraft are 800 and 2 and 1 half for both listed ILS precision approaches and localizer non-precision approaches. Note that the only approach category for which non-standard weather minimums apply to RNAV approaches is Delta. An approach designated as NA means that alternate minimums are not authorized due to an unmonitored navigation facility absence of a weather reporting service, or lack of navigation coverage, so such an approach may not be considered in alternate planning. It's common for air carriers operating under Part 121 to be granted an FAA authorization to derive alternate minimums. If granted, Operation Specifications Paragraph C55 authorizes the carrier to use a formula to determine applicable alternate weather minimums. If the airport under consideration has only one operational navigational facility providing an approach procedure to a suitable runway, the minimum ceiling may be derived by adding 400 feet to the minimum descent height for a non-precision approach or 400 feet to the decision height for a precision approach as applicable. The minimum visibility may be derived by adding one statute mile to the published landing minimum for that same approach. This is often referred to as Method 1, or Rule 1, of the two possible formulas. Method 1 may be required if the forecast wind conditions or navigation facility outages limit suitable runways to 1. Any type of operating instrument approach to a suitable runway qualifies for this method. However, since the purpose is to determine the minimum weather conditions that may be expected for an airport to be used as an alternate, it's best to consider an approach for which the lowest published minimums exist. The lowest possible minimum ceiling under Method 1 would be a 600-foot ceiling and 1 and 1 half statute miles, since a typical Category 1 ILS decision height is 200 feet, and 200 plus 400 equals 600, and the visibility is one half statute mile and one half plus one equals one and one half.
Method 2 allows for possible lower weather minimums when two separate operational navigational facilities, each providing a straight in approach procedure to different suitable runways, exists. The two operational navigational facilities must be based on separate identifiers, and the different runways may be parallel runways or opposite ends of the same runway pavement. Again, any two runways considered for this purpose must be suitable both in terms of the forecast wind direction and aircraft performance requirements. The minimum ceiling may be derived by adding only 200 feet to the higher of the two published decision heights, and the minimum visibility may be derived by adding only one half statute mile to the higher of the two published landing minimums. The lowest possible minimums under Method 2 would be a 400-foot ceiling and one statute mile visibility. Since a typical Category 1 ILS decision height is 200 feet and the visibility is one-half statute mile, if two separate operational navigational facilities to two different suitable runways both have published approach minimums of 200 and one-half, 200 plus 200 equals 400, and one half statute mile plus one half equals one statute mile. Keep in mind that being able to use method two does not necessarily result in the lowest possible weather minimums, since the additions must be added to the higher of the two available approaches. The objective is to determine the lowest possible weather minimums applicable in order to specify a particular airport as an alternate. The authorization to derive alternate weather minimums does not require that method to be used if possible. All that is required is to use a method which results in the lowest weather minimums. As always, check the notums for possible instrument approach outages and runway closures or length restrictions. Here's an example of a method one calculation. The straight in minimums for all approach speed categories of aircraft is a 200 foot decision height and 1800 RVR visibility. Since the formula requires that one statute mile be added to the published minimum visibility and there is no comparable visibility in statute miles to 1800 RVR, the next higher comparable visibility in statute miles is one half for 2400 RVR. Adding 400 feet to the published 200 foot decision height equals 600 feet. Adding one statute mile to the RVR converted to one half statute mile equals one and one half statute mile. If runway five left is the only suitable runway and the glide slope is out of service, the following calculations will apply for aircraft in approach speed category C. For a decision height of 473 feet, the addition of 400 feet results in a minimum ceiling of 873. However, since ceiling heights are only reported and forecast in 100 foot increments, this must be rounded up to the next nearest 100. So 900 feet becomes the minimum ceiling. The published minimum visibility of 5,000 RVR is comparable to one statute mile so the resulting minimum visibility is two statute miles. Here's an example of a method two calculation. The straight in minimums for all approach speed categories of aircraft is a 200 foot decision height and 2400 RVR visibility for ILS approaches to runways two three left and two three right. Both approaches to separate runways are indeed separate functional navigational facilities, as evidenced by the different localizer identifiers, so Method 2 may be used. Method 2 only requires that 200 feet be added to the higher of the two approaches considered, and only one half statute mile be added to the higher of the two approaches considered. Since the published decision height and visibility minimum is the same for both approaches, the resulting minimum ceiling is 400 feet, and the minimum visibility is one statute mile. Let's consider a Category B approach speed aircraft, with the glide slope for the ILS to runway 23 right inoperative. 
Since the published decision height for a localizer approach to runway 23 right is a 397-foot minimum descent height, which would require that 200 feet be added to it, since the rule is that the addition be to the higher of the two approaches considered. The resulting weather minimum would then be a 600-foot ceiling and still one statute mile visibility, since both approach visibilities are 2400 RVR, comparable to one half statute mile. Minimum ceilings must be rounded up to the next nearest 100 feet, since ceilings are only reported and forecast in 100-foot increments. Some additional considerations are that no instrument approach listed in the non-standard minimum section of terminal procedures as in A may be used in determining alternate minimums, the lowest weather conditions within conditional forecast statements, such as tempo, probability, and becoming statements, apply, and inoperative aircraft equipment may influence the determination of applicable alternate minimums per the minimum equipment list. That concludes this lesson on FAA 121-625 Alternate Airport Weather Minima. In summary, any airport specified as an alternate airport must meet certain minimum weather conditions at the time the aircraft would arrive at that airport, following a diversion from the planned destination airport. Typically, this subject will be addressed in the air carrier's op specs. If authorized in the op specs by paragraph C55, alternate weather minimums may be derived using a formula. If derived alternate weather minimums are not authorized, then standard or non-standard alternate weather minimums apply. Derived alternate weather minimums usually yield lower minimums than standard. I certainly hope I've been helpful and invite you to check out my other lessons. Please let me know if there are other aircraft dispatcher subjects you're interested in.